I'm Dr. Annette Darmada. I'm Lourdes Perez. And this is the Vox Femme Network, and you're watching the Vox Femme Festival 2024. The reason we can't get these smiles off our faces, they may have to be surgically removed, is because our very special presentation today is featuring um, Clemencia Zapata. She's our sister, vocalist, percussionist, change maker, uh, composer. Uh, we've known each other for many, many years. Uh, her legacy is vast, and we're going to be talking about that today. She's also one of the original members of the Austin Latino Lesbian and Gay Organization, ALGO, a place that was a refuge and continue to be that we called home during the 90s, uh, the time we met. In aquellos tiempos, in, in aquellos, ancient times. Those times, in those times. And she also, among the bands, the mini bands, um, that uh, Clemencia founded and was a part of as Conjunto Atlan, which was uh, is a is a major part of the history of the Chicano Chicana Chicanx musical movement and social movement for justice. Um, one of the things that uh, many of you may know by now, because on Vox Film we featured nearly a hundred women at this point, and um, of all in all genres of arts and social change. And one of the things uh, that we really like to focus is on these really magnificent, incredibly talented and committed women who have these trajectories through history that uh, are known in their small universes. We all have these small universes, but you may not in the wider international world in pockets, but you may not know them and you should because they, they have made history and they have changed the course of history, in fact, um, and in some cases may have affected your life uh, for the better. And so um, Clemencia Zapata is one of those women who has uh, changed the world uh, over many, many years. And so we're really honored and overjoyed to talk just a little bit about that today. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. How are you all doing? All right. Better now that you're here. <laughs> okay. We said beautiful okay. things nice things about you. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Good. I'll read about them. <laughs> and I'll hear about them in the news tonight. you hear about it later. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure of it. <laughs> one, one, one more thing I want to say before we get started is that I probably still have, I probably have a hernia uh, uh, from the 90s still from from uh, that Clemencia is directly responsible for because anyone who knows Clemencia knows that uh, you can't leave her presence without busting a gut laughing you just can't because that's just, <laughs> and and one of the things that I think changes the world is is that joy and Clemencia has brought that humor mm. and that joy to life and just because she was always smiling doesn't mean that it was always easy it doesn't mean that things were not difficult no way no easy, easy <laughs> we used to no, say that's no way and, easy. and bringing that sense of humor and that joy is something that we uh recognize uh kept everybody going and it might not have been we may not have uh, acknowledged her for that but we are now and it's a time now when that that characteristic of the people around you who are bringing you joy and maintaining that joy in this very difficult time in history, um, <laughs> cherish them, treasure them, yes. because they're keeping you going. Just like food, just like water, just like politics or anything else, the people who bring you joy are keeping us all going. That's true. Um, yesterday, Annette was saying- when Thank we you so much. Those are some very kind words. Gracias. Oh, it's the truth. Uh, yesterday we were talking about today and, and I said, you know, Clemencia is like the Olympics. She makes it look easy, but it's not. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So thank you for that. Um, I wanted to uh, start, we can start anywhere that w that you want to, but I was, uh, I wanted to start with the, a little bit of the history of the Austin Latino Lesbian and Gay Organization. Uh, that's kind of what the center where we met and you were one of the original um, founders, people that were there providing um, support and visibility to 
uh, gay Latinos and Latinos of color and uh, push to get funding from the Texas Health Department when the AIDS crisis was happening and it was a strong presence. So I want you to, to tell us something about that um, history. Okay, yeah, well, I moved to, uh, to Austin from uh, Milwaukee in 1985. And that's when uh, I believe uh, the organization uh, was born with Nazario Saldana, uh, Saul, Dennis Medina, Maria Limon, uh, just to mention a few, because I don't recall all. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just started out being just a regular old Latino, gay and lesbian or queer organization. But then, you know, our brothers and sisters started dying and we had no information uh, regarding AIDS uh, in a bilingual sense or really any sense. And so we got funding, I don't know, to do, I think that was uh, Maria Limon uh, was pretty instrumental in that, getting funding uh, for one for one phone line, one hotline, uh, so folks could call in and get information. So that was the real kickstart. Um, of the health component of uh, algo. Other than that, it was we thought we were just going to be queers and and have Tejano dances and Latino dances and you know just queer off with each other and not have to worry about these uh, you know crises, these epidemics, these viruses, you know, as we did later again with uh, COVID. But uh, at least we had some experience in that, and so you know you learn how to be careful. But uh, nonetheless, that's what really kicked off uh, algo i got involved maybe um a few months after after that that started the organization started and it was at uh at a party uh, <laughs> where where we all meet and uh that's how i got involved with algo and it's been ongoing you know it's still going uh, a lot of new faces uh very few old faces because there's a lot of new new kids on the block but that's always good that's how it's good. Yeah, así comenzó la cosa. Well, that that beginning also of uh, what Clemencia mentions about uh, uh, the hotline. Um, what I understood from some oral history from Saul actually that we heard is that um, uh, Algo was one of the first to receive state funding, one of the first organizations in the country. And people, you have to remember, and for those who weren't alive during those times. Um, it, it was very different. It was very, very different to to be um, two spirit LGBTQIA. There, there was barely a G. We had to fight for an L. We, we didn't have any anything <laughs> else. And forget it if you were of color. And it was, you know, very white centric. Um, and so, uh, and male centric, the, the, the women had to kind of fight their way into. So it's important that I want to say it's important that we also fight for the young people teaching us as well to include more and more people. And we, we had to fight and we, we include everyone. But when we talk about the past and we, the names and the letters are minimal because that's how it was, right? This is, this is going over the history. Um, when she talks about the, um, the AIDS crisis, uh, Algo uh, basically had informed SIDA. I believe it even preceded it. And it was, SIDA was, was the, the 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 acronym for uh, for AIDS in Spanish and there was the recognition that Spanish speakers were not getting the the, the information and uh, it was a group that handed out condoms and information and bilingual bars. went to the bars went to where people were right. and saved a lot of lives and you, and and this was you know before you posted hey I'm saving lives on Instagram <laughs> you know so so you can look up. Uh, all these folks who did it, and you won't find any of that, but it was done, and and um, so I just wanted to say that. Yeah, yeah. and I I just want to say that 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 legacy is is so important because that's that's the root and the foundation, um, and and sometimes we are in despair, thinking that we are alone, there is nothing there, but you gotta look a little back and and see where the root comes from, and and that's. That's what I see when I see you and that legacy of all of you who founded Algo. Um, yeah, um, I- There were um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, literally. <laughs> literally, <laughs> blood, God. sweat, and tears. 
Yeah. And, and one more thing before moving from Algo to one of the many other pieces that we want to highlight, uh, the baile. The, the baile, baile was a dance. It was a big dance every year. And um, and again, you have to remember, uh, many people had no place to go, no place to go, certainly no place to dance with each other. Yeah. Um, very few. Well, you know. Nowhere in Austin could you go dance merengue, cumbia, no. tejano. You you couldn't. There was yeah. that. That was not available. Yeah. So baile, so, uh, algo, through algo made that uh, very much available for for our community. So again, that joy, you, creating that joy that you know weaves keeps our heart woven together in all these times. So. Um. You were saying you were talking about this yesterday. I want you to talk about this too because um, a, a Clemencia, um, you are also you come from a large family. Um, and very, very large. That was family. my mother's. That was my mother's doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the Clemencia Zapata that gets the credit for that. Yeah, Your you, mama. Yeah, that, yeah. That's the other. That's the other Clemencia uh, Zapata, the I real jefa. May she rest in May she rest in peace. You were talking about this yesterday. I want you to talk about this. Yes, yeah, it really goes along with the baile and the joy and the. This was before the word intersectionality, right? Kimberly Crenshaw, uh, credit there. Um, but it was being done um by people like you, Clemencia, because many people had to choose between between their culture and their family, and and their religion often, uh, and and who they were, their gender expression and their sexuality, right? Um, and so one of the things that you were so instrumental in doing is that you were yourself, you were yourself, you you showed people what bravery and, and visibility and yo soy quien soy and with a smile and joy and comida and you were gonna, and, and all that and I might bring you a salmon too, I might cook you something too. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm and then, oh, and then I'm that play, salmon and then lives I'm on. Huh? Say that again. I said that salmon lives on. Yes. yes. And 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 so I think uh, tell us a little bit about that because you're in a, a a big family, familia chicana, and yet you were always who you were, and you modeled that for so many people. You weren't going to leave out one or the other. You weren't. You brought people together. You brought the culture and the community together that so people didn't have to leave parts of themselves behind right well you know coming from a big family uh there are so many different personalities and, and although we may be related by blood we didn't always uh, uh agree on stuff you know and and even now as um as time goes on i've i've never fought anything about being myself i didn't know who else to be and that just came naturally that's you know, I get praised for that, but that's just natural. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be struggling with myself if I had to do anything else or be someone else. So that part, that's the easy part, being Clemencia. There's a lot of parts of that, of me, but that was the easy part. And now, you know, throughout the years, um, families, you know, grow older, some die off, some, you know, change directions and, and you know, things change and sometimes family separates and we try to still keep it together, but there are things that happen in our lives that, you know, separate us. Uh, uh, with that being said, <laughs> most of us are, are still around and uh, trying to communicate. You know, we just had, uh, we just lost um, my mom in February. She mm -hmm. was 101 years old. And that was a little bit difficult for ones that, you know, that didn't really come around. And so we're still kind of struggling with that a little bit. Pero ahí se va, allá que se quedó atrás, you know. From here, we just go forward and try to make things possible, try to make things right, you know, regardless of what the right is. It's your right. Uh, I, remember, I remember meeting your mom, and, and she was so kind. And I remember that she met all of your friends and all of us were hanging oh, yeah. out together and she'll go to the events and everything. And for some of those people, she was like a mother because some oh, people exactly. kicked yeah. out of their family and rejected. So that was a very strong presence and that was a very strong message that was sent. So very appreciative to, to you, Mama. Uh, 
another thing that we uh, and in those times the of Austin that you were part of of making happen was the uh, the Mac Mexican American Cultural Center. And oh, remember, yeah. yes, we used to. It used to be um, uh, a place that was not a building. It was kind of like a, a shed. It was like a shed. We'll have events there. And uh, it was a workshop. <laughs> it was a workshop, yeah. right? And, it was a and workshop. Tell, us, for the tell, city us, of tell us about that struggle. Tell, tell us yeah. about that. Well, uh, evidently, this started way before me. Uh, uh, we were giving funding to do this, and it never happened. And then finally, the uh, uh, through a lot of hard work of a lot of the older uh, Chicano Chicana activists, um, were able to get the site, which already was the site, but the city was still uh, a part of that. And it was, I think, the street and bridge, something or other. So it was a big, huge, you know, warehouse, metal warehouses, and uh, we used to hold. Uh, well, with Tomas, big help with Tomas Salas. Mm -hmm. We used to uh, hold the uh, Pastorelas there, you know, which was a play, uh, a Chicano play written uh, for during Christmas, but it had a, many different directors. So it had a lot of different inputs. So a lot different components of the arts and different presentations. And so we would do that. And also we would transform that place like you would not believe. You were there, we, we had dances, it looked like a, like a party house and we had the plays with three stages and you know heaven hell and earth and you know and Boyd Vance was even there with all his kids and you know singing and you know it was wonderful we utilized that space until they said okay we're gonna knock it down now <laughs> and mm -hmm. so we we stayed there until they did that and actually uh Tomas and I were the last soldier standing <laughs> at that place. And then once it was knocked out, it was I now you can see what, what it is now. And you know, we both had uh uh we we had parts in the I guess the organizing of it. Uh I was uh appointed by actually uh Mayor Gus uh Garcia to sit on the advisory board for for the Mac during that time. You know, a lot of struggles as as we do as we go through when uh when they give us something, everybody wants it, you know, <laughs> everybody wants it. So uh, we have kind of, we were a little tercos about that and saying, no, you can't have it. It's ours. And so we just kept building on that. And um, that's it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it till this day. And it's still growing. Yes. I remember um, that to set up anything there, you had to bring the chairs, the theater chairs, you had to borrow chairs from from different organizations and make it happen. Like it, it was like, not only like, it, it was like a magical place where artists came together and said, okay, let's do this. And then we'll do fundraisers for the Mac because we wanted it to be funded. And I think there were two or three votes. I don't remember correctly, but the, this, a city that praised itself of being the music capital would not approve the bonds for the for Mac. For years, for years. years. Right. Right. Rejected. It was voted down right. for for a, a Latino or a cultural organization. So that was also the fight against the racism of the city and how you had to kind of like fight for every little thing. Um, until now, it's such a beautiful place. And and but now you good. see the majority. You know, I remember you talk about right? those. You talk about those uh, theater seats. I think you know. Don't get me to lie. And again, but I think. Uh, they came from uh, the Chicago house or somehow uh, yeah. when that closed down, some of those seats, the yeah. and I would confiscate everything. We would, re you know, reuse, we would get tools and lumber and whatever we could use to make things, you know, uh, uh, hospitable for when people would, would go there. And we actually, well, well Tomas, and, you know, with help of the community build like theater seating. You know, yeah, <laughs> which was yes. nuts, you know, nuts because everything we knew was going to be uh, just temper. And even we even put wheels and casters underneath so we could move stuff out of the way in case it was going to be used for something else. So, yeah. we, you know, we always had a vision of, of utilizing that space uh, for what it was supposed to be used for community. And that's, yes. you know, I'm so happy that it's still it's still that. Still that. It's still and that. With better seats. 
<laughs> your bare seeds. Yes, uh, uh, because you also were a contractor. You have an, a mad building skills. So between <laughs> you and Tomas, who also can build mad building, continue, skills. Mad building skills continues to build today, you just transform yes. everything. And, and it, it actually extended to some of us as artists when we had concerts. It's like, can we get this stage going? Can we build something? Can we do an outdoor beautiful setting? Like it, it was lending lending our skills to to the broader cultural community that didn't have an infrastructure, but we were the infrastructure. You were the infrastructure. You build it. You're like, okay, vamos, vamos. Mm -hmm. And so invisible, yeah. invisible infrastructure it just happened. It would just happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Yes. Yeah. Remember aquellos tiempos. Aquellos tiempos. Let's talk about you as a woman percussionist, uh, songwriter, vocalist, composer, in in a in a world that of music that that wasn't you know still very male, and you edge your way in there, and you're an amazing percussionist. And so how? How was that experience, and and when did you pick up the 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 idea and the desire to be a percussionist and make music that way? Well, I like to bang on things. <laughs> Let's start with that. I've been banging on things. I guess I was reminded by a childhood friend who I met up with on Facebook that remembers me in elementary school, you know, banging my pencils on those wooden desks. <laughs> that we used to have, you know, the flip tops, yeah. the flip top desk and uh, uh, reminded me of that. I had forgotten all about that. I really took an interest as a child and it really started playing when I was around nine. And next thing you know, I had a drum set. You know, my dad was very uh, supportive and my brother was getting ready to go in the service and he bought a drum set and then it was mine. And so right there, it just, it took off and been doing it ever since and just been like banging you know, on, banging I don't know what else to do. That's another component of me, you know. Excuse me? I've been banging on things ever since. Yeah, just bang, you know me. <laughs> Being the banger that I am, you know. <laughs> when I used to complain to uh to Saul about, oh dude, oh man, my hands hurt me. They feel so tired. And he'd say, Pues también quieres estar banging and banging and banging and banging, pues por eso. <laughs> Yeah. So, so that's, you know, that's what that's what started very, you know, as a child. And um, it's just been with me since then and still is going strong and, you know, getting older and hands are still, you know, feeling tired because of all my banging. But other than that, you know, I'm still going. The, um, the, was it difficult in in the in the men wor world of music to be a woman percussionist or was it? What was your experience? I think it was more difficult for those that I that I was around. It wasn't difficult for me. I knew who I was and what I was doing. But they're like, "What the hell? What are we gonna do about this? You know, <laughs> who's this one? What you are we doing with that. her? You know." And so that just that's that did not become my problem. That was their problem. I just went and they figured out their stuff. You know, and so uh, yeah, I guess there are struggles, but you know. Yeah, they're just not enough for me to like seriously lose sleep over, if you will. It's like because there, there's always something else, you know. There's always, there's always somebody that's gonna be, um, you know, critical, and criticized, not approve. Somebody that's gonna love you more. Somebody's gonna love you less, and such is life. So uh, that's it. I didn't find it difficult, uh, as one would uh, assume. It was right. not difficult for me. And I imagine that extends to, I mean, we're talking about being a, a you know, a woman uh, in, in the music world, which is very dominated by men to this day. Right. Uh, but, yes. you know, you also for, uh, again, we're in the context of today, but back in the day, in aquellos tiempos, you being yourself and you being, I don't know, butch, however you identify, um, just wearing clothes that were more, you know, men's clothes were considered men's clothes. Um, and just looking all dapper and handsome and stuff. And I imagine that that same, you know, more problem for you than for me, kind of, uh, that was your experience. Um, because it was shocking to people 
for women who, you know, dressed, it was cross-dressing. It was Luisa Capetillo, but it wasn't cross-dressing on the exactly. weekend. It was all day long. Yeah. It was all yeah, day that's long. who that's who came. Yeah, that's who came to mind when you started talking about that, Lisa Capetillo. You know, yes, with a comb in her pocket and you know her briantina and her hair cream and you know, yeah, yeah. So thank so thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for that. Thank you for that as well. I, that I would also like to thank uh, those that supplied my wardrobe. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> a word from our sponsors. A word from our sponsors. <laughs> Because that that yeah. also uh, gave permission to other women to dress as we as in we, the full spectrum we wish, of in the we spectrum are. Of, um, some of us are not, you know, attracted to more feminine clothes or whatever. But it's it's like it's what you want to wear, how you are comfortable in your own body, and and you you teach by example because you're comfortable. You're like, well, that's not my problem. <laughs> I I'm here. I'm well, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allá ustedes, you know. So I, I think that today, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yo no sé de eso. <laughs> <laughs> ustedes. But it's yeah. those are those are roads that were open that we may not know where they came from, but it came from people like you. Yes. And this is what we want to present today. Uh, well, I think you, it it continued it continued on because you go back like you know the twenties, the thirties, the forties. You all sure. you find that you know, That's but it yes. wasn't, of course. You know, it was very uh, privately and stuff. Now it's like it was everywhere, you know? Yeah. And it, you know, it's like it, people aren't afraid to dress how they want to dress. Well, even, you know, we're going to, uh, como se llamaba Leslie in Austin? Come on. Yeah. Did Leslie give a flying, you know? Rest in peace. Leslie yeah. was out there with with his beard and his tutu, you know? His and yeah, the hair years. up in a ponytail. You know. Yeah, riding around Austin for years, running for mayor. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we remember that. Yeah. Also for uh for women early on, uh cross dressing or even a little deviation from the usual dressing was also signaling uh that you were lesbian, that you were gay, like how you wore your pants, if the zipper was in the front and not on the side. There's a lot of code history there. Mm -hmm. History of the code of 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 cross-dressing yes, um, yes, yes. that that is not known either but uh, thank you for being part of that thanks for being you for being yourself Dale, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you were gonna no i was gonna i wanted to ask about another all going on at the same time uh conjunto atlan and the chicano movement um tell us a little bit about that just talk about that a little bit well uh conjunto atlan uh started in the 70s in Austin, Texas, out of the Chicano movement, and Juan Tejeda and uh, Jose Flores uh, Peregrino were very uh, instrumental, were with the, the founders of Conjunto Aslan. And I didn't uh, join Conjunto Aslan until approximately 10 years later. And, you know, so we still get together whenever whatever we can or whatever it it, uh, it calls for a performance of Conjunto Aslan. And it's actually, uh, I was raised with Conjunto music, you know, as a child when I was 14, I, my dad used to take me uh, uh, to go sit in with Flaco Jimenez. And I'm, I'm 14 years old and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll go. You know, it wasn't like, okay, I'll do it. It was always like, sure, anything to make you happy, dad. <laughs> and it was really <laughs> vice versa. And I was going through through uh, through depression as a as a youngster relocating from Milwaukee where I was raised uh, to San Antonio where I was born, and so I didn't realize it, but I was going through depression. And this is all in retrospect, and this is being involved with uh, with or having the support of my parents of my dad that would take me. I don't know, you know, where what I would have done. You know, he's it just made it easy. He made it easy for me to be me. You know, so yeah. it's all that that do domino effect. You know, so that and was you, that conjunto, and I've been with them all this time. And you, you, uh, conjunto Atlan has uh, some. You know, the the recordings are historic. I mean, the the recordings are there. You know, forever. So. Um, that's that's a part of the history there uh, that really documented and celebrated uh, the movement. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We did a, a 
a tour of schools, uh, educational tour across the state of Nebraska. There's some stories there that we'll have to say that off camera, but that was very much fun. <laughs> we went from one part of the state to the other. That was that was amazing. Wow. And and for people who don't know, uh, just there's a connection between conjunto music and farm work, right? There's that there's that connection there. Can you just tell us a little bit about you know maybe even tell us about one of the songs or so that they get an idea of of how. Conjunto music kind of went hand in hand with the life of people. Well, I'm, you know, I'm not the expert on this, but uh, knowing that a lot of uh, the far, farm workers, you know, what did they have? An accordion, guitars, they would be accordion y bajo sexto or guitarra. And they're making music because that, you know, we can get into it and that, you know, Germany, German polkas, you know, uh, all the uh, Polish polkas the lyrics were really what made the difference. Uh, they were lyrics about the struggles, as many lyrics are now. Very powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. In the estilo conjunto. Yeah. yeah. I remember uh, uh, that one that was very popular, El Picket Sign. Yeah, El Picket Sign. Oh, yeah, El Picket Sign. Yeah, El Picket Sign. It was all about, you know, the struggle. This was during... Uh, uh, the struggle with the with the ubas with the it great is. boycotting right. with the, the great no boycott uh -huh. from California. Yeah, not yes. the farm workers movement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those those songs both you know uh, accompany the movement and and now also live as living documents of the, of the music. Yeah, yeah. Or, or they're there. They're yeah. At least they're they're still documented somewhere. Yeah, they're they're there in the in the cut and paste glue glue stick time. Hi. The type on the typewriter yeah. times, <laughs> but they're there. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was thinking about you have uh, you have had different uh, bands. You have been part of bands, and you have been also a band leader. Uh, you had Sazon, Cerro Nato, Conjunto Atlan, uh, to name a few. And some of them have different different sounds of music, different uh, genres of music from different countries and, and America Latina, you know, blues. I mean, it's like you have done so many things. And so I, I was thinking like, what what makes you like be so excited and interested in, in all genres of music and, and, and just uh, also kind of like the flexibility and the, the, the joy of like, okay, vamos a ver, es un vallenato. Let's 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 know this music. Let's see where it comes from. So, talk talk to us about that. All of the different bandas. Yeah, getting into all the the different styles, the different genres of music. You know, I credit that to my upbringing because I was raised in a very diverse uh, community, and uh, I mean, I'm talking diverse. So, you know, there's. Uh, Mexican American, there were, you know, Puerto Rican Americans, there were, you know, German Americans, Polish Americans, Serbian Americans, you know, Native Americans, that todo. And so if you don't get some kind of music out of that, you know, and I was raised with that, and you could hear it throughout the whole neighborhood, different musics. If you just have to go to one house and then hear that, you know, Oh, just like the different smells of food. It's the same thing. You know, you have the different, it's la misma cosa. You know, you get the food and you get the music and it's it's the same. You just learn and we uh, exchange culturas. You know, that's that's where that came from. And that's what I was raised with. And again, I didn't, I didn't know any, any different. So in my brain, I was always hearing conga. I would hear drum. I would hear weedle. I would hear clave. I would hear, you know, whatever. Whatever I hear, different components of the different uh, styles of genres of music, and so that's why I I got my interest still holds with several different you know old school uh, rhythm and blues, soul soul music, uh, disco music, you know all kinds. It's all like rooted somehow together in my brain. Especially as children, right? Children just learn. And so you were born in San Antonio, but you were raised in Milwaukee. So you're talking about this, this diverse area of Milwaukee, right? That um, where you just were steeped in, in all these different cultures. And they, they kind of raised you in a way they raised you like, they exactly. were just, 
Yeah. And yeah. so it, it's the same thing that we're talking about, about how you provided such an example. You don't you will never even know how many young people saw you growing up and you raised them. Clemencia, you raised them and, you know, where they could have fallen into a depression about who they are. Uh, they had you as an example because little kids are sponges and adults are, too. Yeah. And that's really beautiful that all those different peoples from around the world at a time when we're trying to, like, squelch every difference we can and block immigration and block people. Uh, the thing that people are missing, it, you also got it through the through the Well, we forgot to mention you're a chef to you smoke you can smoke anything <laughs> well oh did i say that ah! <laughs> uh, wait me. wait what Let are you was that hello hello are you still there <laughs> is this, is this thing I, I didn't hear you is this thing on yeah but you know you you are an amazing chef and cook and and it's the, i mean also just like the first thing you said was the smells of all the foods and the and the different spices it just opens up your world so yeah. uh, folks we need to open up our world we really um, do not I, close them down and I, uh, I speaking of opening up your world because your your house your house in austin um the garden street house was also a sanctuary and a, and a hosting place for artists at refugee, a, camp. refugee camp and some of us <laughs> lived there for a while and, and there were in and outs of people from everywhere that will yeah, be even, even I lived there for a while and you did <laughs> and I remember <laughs> that when an artist came through town we said Clem, Diana, there, there's this artist coming. Can we do? Can we host them here? And and can we stick them somewhere? Yeah. Can we put them somewhere? Can <laughs> you know? Because this like you know hotels, B and B, whatever. It was no, no. They can stay here. There's a room, and so that's the way it was done. And and those experiences are unforgettable. And and also it's it's a way that we grew up together. Like we we yeah. put our resources together. And we we made things happen, and and mm -hmm. you were a pillar on that. It was like you could count on you, and you still can count on you. And it's those are the people who are the the people who hold us. We are like houses, and if we don't have those foundations and those pillars, um, our lives would have been very different. And mm -hmm. so it it depends on what kind of madera. The material you were built with and then you can last and, and you have had a lasting effect and, and a trajectory that is um is quite moving and 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 it will make us cry because <laughs> because you have given so shoo, much shoo 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 and uh, um, yeah so for those of you watching be a clemencia for somebody else that's what I would say. Yeah, be 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 a Clementia. You may not be able to someone. cook as good as she does, but yeah, just don't use my social security number, please. <laughs> <laughs> but they can That's make mine. they can make deposits if they want to. Then, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Oh well, yeah, go ahead on. <laughs> go ahead on with it. Go ahead on with it. Clemencia, and we talked about how it wasn't always easy, right? And, and um we're we're here again, like laughing and smiling and 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 but is there anything that you want to talk about that, you know, do you want to talk about anything that that was difficult, any of aquellos tiempos that were I don't know, anything, a message that you want to give out there that somebody else might be struggling with or suffering with and just it's always good to see here you are on the other side of it, right? Uh, so we always want to give that opportunity. Well, you know, probably the uh, the biggest thing that that I went through are all the deaths, you know, and that's so. I mean, that's we didn't. Of course, again, we don't have a choice, but you mm -hmm. to have to accept all of that, and then you choose whether to stay there and dwell in the sorrow, in the or depression, and or move on, you know, and and grow and take the positive things from the negatives and from the losses and just try to keep going. You know, maybe one of these days I'm going to have to remind myself of that again, which I do every day, you know, uh, yeah. but literally remind myself, acuérdate por mí. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll play this back for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really, really. Or have Lourdes <laughs> sing that song for me. <laughs> I will. 
Well, the song that you're about, the song that you heard at the beginning or about to hear, I don't know, because I haven't edited it yet, but this, <laughs> I'll say both. The song that you're about to hear, the song that you heard at the very beginning uh, was uh, Si Me Quieres, and that was written by uh, our guest today, Clemencia Zapata. Um, and that is, it's available online. We'll put some, we'll put some links so that you can Somewhere. hear it. Somewhere in outer space. <laughs> And there will be other links um, just to, you know, to more information. Um, and is there is there anything else that you we always ask if there's anything you want uh, us to point people to or a social justice uh, event or organization or anything that you want us to uh, to point people toward? Yeah, vote. <laughs> please okay. vote. Yeah, okay. Please vote, you guys. You know, that is so important. And we really, really need this change right now, if anything. If anything, it's todo, todo viene en mi corazón y aquí estoy and whatever happens, happens, but let's go. Let's get, I'm not, I don't have any cats. I did at one time have like, how many guys? About 15. They were but all, anyway, they were all out. I don't have any cats. I don't have any dogs, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. It's been a great honor and it's always beautiful to see you and mil gracias por tantas cosas. Gracias a ustedes también. Bendiciones siempre. Los quiero mucho. Chingos y chingos y chingos. Les queremos un chingo. Love okay. you. Love you too. So speaking Chao. with Clemencia Zapata, I'm Annette Darmada. I'm Lourdes Perez. And this is the Vox Femme Network. Thank you. All righty. From Brownsville. Chao. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> and that one. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey. Abrázame si y bésame, si que sabrosón, si a merenguear. Si Abrázame si y bésame, si que sabrosón, si a merenguear. Eso. Abrázame si y bésame si que sabroso si a merenguear. Si Abrázame si y bésame si que sabroso si a merenguear.
abrázame si me quieres y bésame si me quieres que sabroso si me quieres a merengue si me quieres abrázame si me quieres y bésame si me quieres que sabroso si me quieres 